Today we're going to be talking about covert narcissism and some of the signs that you need to look out for in the dating world and in the business world and just in, you know, in the world in general, because covert narcissism is, it can be seductive, it is very sneaky, and I think it is far more uh, destructive than overt narcissism. Overt narcissism is something that we can, we're pretty much, we can spot fairly quickly. People who are boastful, grandiose, lack empathy for others, feel entitled to exploit others emotionally, sexually, intellectually, you know, they're the bullies in the workplace who cozy up to the boss or the manager and who make it difficult for you to complete projects. They are people in relationships who um, will cheat, that will lie, that will lie about cheating, who gaslight you, who smear your name, who love bomb you, pull you in. But once you get some idea of what you're dealing with, you can pretty much see, oh my gosh, I was in, involved with a an overt narcissist. All the signs were there, but the oxytocin was flowing, the love bombing, the trauma bonding, and you were told so often how wonderful they were and how silly you were that you eventually learned to believe them. Um, but the signs are pretty easy to see. But when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, this is an entirely different thing. And I want to just talk about some of the things that we need to look out for when we're dealing with a covert narcissist. So covert narcissists, very interesting, they can appear to be timid, fragile, and even shy. They can appear to be even loving on the surface and want to help help. And when you first meet them, they don't seem like they're intimidating. You aren't afraid. You, you don't feel overwhelmed by them because like I said, they can appear fragile and insecure even. And what will happen is they'll make you feel seen. They'll make you feel seen. They'll make you feel important. They mirror your emotions back to you and you are captured by this person who is really a wolf in sheep's clothing. You think you're dealing with a sheep, but you're really not. And they'll tell you about, you know, their troubled childhoods, or they'll tell you about how this person victimized them and this person victimized them. And at the same time, they're helping you feel seen. And then when you start to share your story about maybe a childhood story, and your agenda is not to manipulate this person, it's just completely to share you don't realize that what's happening is a, a covert operation to gain your trust and to help you believe that the person that you're dealing with is actually a sheep. The agenda is far from wanting to meet you where you are, wanting to um, be your life partner in uh, the sense of being a true partner, which means we reciprocate, that we are there for each other emotionally, that there is no one-upping. There is no shaming or blaming. I love you and you love me and I'm going to support you when you're down. You're going to support me when I'm down and I'm going to champion you when you're, you know, just so you can stay up and I'm, and you're going to do the same for me. I'm going to have healthy boundaries. I'm going to take care of myself and not make you responsible for how I feel and vice versa. When you first meet a, an, um, a covert narcissist, that's what you think that you're getting, Right. So you think that you're getting someone who can be your partner and because they're not intimidating, you're not turned off, right? Um, you might be looking for someone who is grandiose and overly sexual and who thinks that, you know, uh, whatever they do is awesome and you're on the lookout for that. But you might not be on the lookout for the covert narcissist. And when they show up in your life and they appear to be so fragile and, and so tender, you can really be knocked for a loop and you can stay in this type of relationship for a lifetime and never even realize that you are being abused. So covert narcissism is about one upping. Covert narcissism is about somebody who believes that they are more important than you, but it's, it's done in a very covert way. Um, covert narcissists, um, they crave admiration. They crave being the center of attention, but again, everything's done in a very covert way. You can have a covert narcissist in your life who lies, who creates storylines about what happened to them in their life. Um, you can you can bump into someone who is always trying to trying to get other people to feel sorry for them, but what will happen is in their telling of their story, 
It is about capturing an audience and making them feel sorry for them. But at the same time, they're, they're webbing this lie of, oh, but I'm okay, you know, and I feel sorry for the people that are really trying to persecute me. And, you know, um, oh, my husband uh, cheated on me. And, you know, it's because, um, you, you know, he had an affair and he, he just lost interest in the marriage. And yet the truth is, the covert narcissist may have actually been cheating on her husband, but that's not the story she'll tell. She'll take a little bit of a truth and she'll expand on it so that in the spinning of this tale, she comes out on top. And if you're dealing with the covert narcissist and you're paying attention, what you'll notice is that is a pattern that they will try to suck you in. And even though they're guilty of what they might be telling people is happening in their life with their spouse or their sister, or their mother, even though they're guilty of it, um, they'll hide that truth. And so, oh yeah, you know, um, we're getting a divorce and I caught my husband cheating on me. But the real truth is that she cheated on him, but she'll never tell you that. And, you know, I feel sorry for him. And the husband may not have even cheated on her. It's, a, it's just to spin the tale that I'm getting divorced and this is why I caught him cheating right? And so the people at the workplace, her family, her friends are all feeling sorry for her. But the tale being spun is one of um, superiority. In other words, she is actually the victim and she is superior to her victim. But when you're dealing with the covert narcissist, you don't see this right away because on the surface, they seem compliant. On the surface, they're playing your emotions against you. They're masters at attuning themselves to what other, other people's emotions. So if you're somebody who is sensitive to cheating, they'll tell you a story about cheating where they come out on top, but they're the victim um, and they won't tell you the whole truth, right? So um, covert narcissists also tend to be uh, more introverted, right? Um, the overt narcissist um, uh, is not easy um, the overt narcissist, it's easy to identify, right? They can be arrogant and, you know, insensitive to other people. But with the covert narcissist, they're, they're actually more prone to depression, right? Um, and they are much more likely to um, seem timid and fragile. I think that's really important for people to walk away from and understand that not when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, you're dealing with someone who is prone to depression, who is more introverted, who it seems to be more compliant, and their abuse of other people is not obvious to spot, where you don't see it right away. They'll t they're telling you how generous they are, but they're never, they're never committing financially. They're telling you how good they are to you, but you don't feel good. They tell you how um, wonderful they are, but they can't hold down a job. They tell you how smart they are, but you know they can't hold down a job. They tell you how much people love them, but they have no friends. Um, and if you're not looking for these inconsistencies in the way they're showing up, you won't look. You won't. You won't find them. So you have to be looking for them. The overt narcissist will actually demand that other people pay attention to them. Whereas with the covert narcissist, they get upset when you don't listen to them. They get upset. They'll stonewall you if they feel like you've lost interest in the conversation. They will punish you if you don't, if you don't give them 100% of your attention. You will notice that they uh, get very irritable when they're in a room full of people and people aren't paying attention to them. Or if people call them out on over-talking. Covert narcissists are masters at over talking people about hijacking conversations and in my humble opinion i think what this is this is all about them needing to spin together a narrative that puts them in a light whereas they're a victim but they're also superior to other people and as long as they're in the center of the conversation and they're controlling the flow of conversation they're getting a feel for how other people are receiving them. When someone steps up and says, you know, oh, well, excuse me, but you, you're over-talking me, the covert narcissist might say, oh, okay, no problem. But their partner is going to hear it on the way home. Their partner is going to hear the rage and the outcry because someone dared to ask them to stop over-talking them.
thing that you'll look for in when you're looking for a covert narcissist and the way they relate to people is they definitely have a fragile sense of self. They're always trying to boost their level of importance, even if they're lying. Even if they're lying, they'll tell you that their boss is going to give them a promotion, fly them all around the world, and that money's coming soon. It never pans out. When you're dealing with the covert narcissist, they are all smoke and mirrors. And because you love them and because they've done ju such a good job at convincing you how wonderful they are and how important they are and also how fragile they are, it's very difficult for you to call them out on their nonsense, right? Um, so this is something to look for. What you look for is this idea that what they say is coming down the pike never, ever manifests. The other thing that you'll notice is that Covert narcissists are wonderful at blaming and shaming people. So where you'll see within um, an overt narcissist, they come right out and they say, you're ridiculous and this, 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 this you know, and you're stupid, right? Where a covert narcissist, they're a lot more tactful. I once observed this um, happen right in front of me and I couldn't say anything because it, was, it wasn't my relationship, but this couple had gotten into some financial trouble and she failed to mention that one of the ways that they got into trouble was because they used credit cards to fund a trip that her parents had um, taken. Now, this was kept out of the conversation. And what the female wanted to discuss was her husband had purchased an item. And so she tried to make everyone, everyone in the conversation uh, believe that their financial troubles were all about this one item that her husband had purchased. She never mentioned that the credit card bill had been rung up, rung up because she insisted that they fly her, uh, her family in and pay for family's expenses. Never, she never ever brought that to the table. Um, and so it looked like at the moment that it was all the husband's fault, that he was neglectful. And the husband was just shaking his head, bobbing his head like, yep, that's what happened, like it's all my fault. So what a covert narcissist will do will play the victim and even, even though they are the one creating the havoc, the strife, and the financial worry in the family, even though they are not pulling in any money, even though um, they are the reason that you have lost friendships and you don't see your family anymore, even though they will find ways to make you think that it's because of you. So they pretend to be a victim of your behavior. So they pretend to be your victim. Like this is all because of you. So they're always blame shifting. So when you try to hold them accountable, somehow they'll say things like, what are you talking about? You know, that's not true. You know that this is what we agreed on and you never agreed on any of that. And so with a, with a covert narcissist, you'll notice that they never take accountability for what they've said or what they've done. And they have absolutely no remorse for the actions that they bring to the relationship. And below the veil of consciousness, you will not know that what you're dealing with is, is a master manipulator. Another thing to look out for is if you are genuinely confused in your relationship, there's a reason. When you're in the right relationship, you're not confused. You don't walk around dazed. You don't feel like the world is a crazy place. You don't question your reality. So another earmark of covert narcissism is their need to um, make you think that they are more wiser than you, that their perception is more acute than your perception. And they do this by gaslighting you. They do this by maintaining power over you intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually by getting you to second guess yourself. So you say, wait, wait, you said that when we were going to go there, you were going to do this. And they come back with, no, I never said that. You're making that up. That never happened. How could you, I would never say something like that. That's not the kind of person I am. I don't want you to think that about me. How could you think that about me? Right? You know that they said this thing. And when you call them out on it, what they do is because they have to maintain power over you. And I believe that they enjoy keeping their victim confused. I believe it. I think that's one of the ways they feel powerful in the relationship. Look what I'm able to do. You know, she thought that she was correct. And look, I was able to daze, confuse her, you know, over talk, over talk her, gaslight her, get her to feel confused. And look, she shut up. Look, she's sleeping. Look, the conversation's over. Look, she'll never ask me about that phone number again. 
You'll notice that in conversations with a covert narcissist, the conversation will always look back, loop back to them. There is a sense of disregard for your opinion. Your opinion will never be validated. And if it, if it is validated, it's, it's half-heartedly validated. And what will happen is the next day, everything will go back to normal, especially when you're coming out of the narcissistic abuse cycle and you start calling a covert narcissist out on their lies, on their projection, on their denial, on their twisting of words, on their distorted reality. When you start calling them out on it, what you'll notice is they might be agreeable in moments, which is this intermittent validation, will, which will keep a highly empathic codependent partner stuck. And it's so important that somebody who has, who's suffering from codependency and who's highly emotional, um, highly sensitive to the needs of others, that you rise above the emotions that you're experiencing and look for the patterns because you will notice a consistent pattern of disregarding your opinion and devaluing you, especially when you are not in agreement with the covert narcissist. There is absolutely no regard for the fact that you have spent money on the relationship, that you pay for the mortgage, that you pay for all the expenses. They will twist tails and make them sound, make themselves sound, make themselves sound so valuable to you in your relationship. Um, they will make promises of taking care of you. It will never come through. I've heard stories of, from my clients where covert narcissists were promising their spouse that, oh, you know, when I get this job, you're going to be able to stay home and you're not going to have to work, right? The, the covert narcissist can't hold down any job in some cases um, because they burn bridges, because they are so grandiose, because they are so really, so at the core, very insecure. It's important that you know, if, if you're somebody who has certain characteristics, like if you're an empath, if you're a codependent, if you're a caretaker, if you're somebody who is self-sacrificing, if you're somebody who puts other people's needs before your own needs, if you tend to be a peacekeeper, if you tend to worry more about other people than you do yourself, then it's really important that you recognize that you might be a target for narcissistic abuse. And I just think it's just ridiculous that you can come from an abusive background as a, you know, as a child, grow up to be somebody who has some codependency issues, who has some self-esteem issues, but who just wants to be loved, right? And who is suffering from abandonment or attachment, or you're somebody who is just naturally a giving person who naturally believes in other people, who is highly empathic, highly sensitive, and sees the best in other people. You know, uh, you may not understand that you are a target for, for narcissistic abuse. And I think that's why it's so important to talk about the symptoms of covert narcissism, to understand the idea that you know, a covert narcissist is not going to appear grandiose overtly. But if you spend enough time with them, what you'll hear is that there is this, this language of superiority, that they do feel and want you to believe that they are superior to you intellectually, emotionally, they are wiser than you, that you should always trust their opinion, right? And, and they're, it's, it's like an infection, it's like a germ that, that infects your brain. And before you know it, you're just like so detached from yourself. And if you're not someone who is regu who's used to checking in with the self, right? You might not even know that in terms of where you are emotionally is extremely toxic. So, um, narcissists, covert narcissists use trauma bonding and it's, um, a, it's in a condition that occurs through intermittent validation or reinforcement. So intermittent validation is, is conditioning. So if you listen to me, I will praise you. If you don't listen to me, I take that praise away. If you value me in front of your friends and family and you don't call me out on my nonsense, then I will praise you and I will validate you. If you call me out on my lies, if you call me out on the fact that what I say is going to happen never happens, then I'm going to stonewall you. I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to abandon you. I'm going to threaten you with divorce. So it's this idea, you don't even realize you're being conditioned to behave like Pavlov's dog. It's like Pavlovian conditioning. 
Stockholm syndrome is what happens when we are reduced to a childlike state where we are, we have positive feelings about the person who is abusing, abusing us, right? And we've become emotionally dependent upon this abuser. And we don't even realize that the relationship we're in is abusive. So it's important that we understand as far as like trauma bonding and leaving a covert narcissist, it's this intermittent validation or intermittent reinforcement mixed with Stockholm syndrome type dynamic where we're being abused, but we are, we have become reduced to thinking and feeling like a child in, in most cases. And we are now being obedient to this abuser who has manipulated us from beginning to end. So if you recognize any of these symptoms in yourself where you are could be a target for a covert narcissist, it's very important that you take this information very, very seriously because our relationships with other people, especially our romantic relationships, have the ability to affect us mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, financially, spiritually, you name it. Uh, we can become so drained and so confused and so far removed from the self that we are literally dying slowly each and every day. So if you recognize that you are this type of a person, that you are a target for narcissistic abuse, it's so important that you know that this is not your fault, that you have been groomed, that's not your fault, and that your kindness has been exploited. It's very important that you see yourself as a victim and understand that, wow, I was victimized. That's gonna help you identify your I and give you a, a healthy sense of self to begin protecting the self. Wow, I was abused. Yes, once you know that you're abused and once you know that you're a victim, you develop a sense of urgency to protect the self, right? Now there's some meat on the bone. I have to protect me, 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 me. The covert narcissist was all about them, 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 them. You didn't exist. So now when you say, wow, this person abused me, now you actually exist, right? You can work from there. So forgive yourself. It's also time that, it's also important that you understand that narcissistic relationships take time to um, like switch the power. So you go from being completely powerless to the powerful being in your life. It's going to take time for you to switch this power where this other person realizes and identifies, wait a minute, I am no longer your lapdog, right? Things have changed. So don't expect that this relationship is going to change overnight. It's not going to change overnight. Um, it's important that you understand how to reduce contact with this person as much as you can. One of the techniques I use is shutty shutty. Some people refer to the gray rock method. And so shutty shutty to me means I do not answer questions that I absolutely do not have to answer. Um, and in most cases, when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, they're just, they're just, they're just gunfire, right? Like rapid fire firing questions just to engage you. Cause they're trying to get, trying to figure out, they're trying to take your emotional temperature. And so I've noticed that if I just don't answer the questions, I shutty shutty or I leave, I just leave, I go away. Then there's, then I'm, the chances of me being abused are much slimmer. So, um, the gray rock method refers to closing yourself off to, uh, the narcissist. You don't answer their phone calls. You stick to yourself. You go out and you reconnect with your friends. And if you have to speak to them, you just talk about bare minimum, just facts. Narcissists hate facts. They hate when you follow their logic because their logic is always changing. I suggest that you reduce your uh, time with a narcissist as much uh, as possible. Um, you know, the other thing that we have to consider is that we cannot allow what happened with this person to keep us from uh, trusting ourselves. The, one of the biggest things that my clients have to overcome when I'm coaching them is this distrust in themselves. How could I have gone through this? I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a nurse, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a business professional or, you know, I'm just a kind person. Like how could this have happened to me? So this, this, this trust and this anxiety develops in them. So it's very, very important that you understand that that trust needs to be rebuilt in yourself slowly. Um, the last thing I want to say before we end this podcast is if you think about this relationship more objectively, if you go back in time and you think about how the relationship started, think about, make a timeline of all your gut instincts, make a timeline of all the times you thought, mm, I think he's lying to me, or, oh, I don't like that he said that, or, oh, I don't like that she said that, or, oh, I just caught her lying to her friend, or, uh, 
you know, she said that by this time she was going to have a job or he said that we were going to go to this event. And there's always an excuse. There's always an excuse. And this is how they keep you in a tizzy. Make a timeline of how often this has happened and when, and then make a timeline of how you felt when this happened. And you'll be shocked at how right your gut instinct was. And slowly, if you do this, if you learn to observe the patterns, then you'll see you were always right. But because you were manipulated by a very professional, tactful, emotional manipulator, they were able to exploit your emotions. So the goal is to become aware of how this happened and to become aware of your need to love the self, set healthy boundaries and hold people accountable and to also hold yourself accountable. When you feel something, say something. When you feel something, honor that something. Don't ignore that something. And if you do that over and over and over, then you'll realize that you are, you, you have divine wisdom. You just were tuned into more into the narcissist than the self. And that the less time you spend around this narcissist, the greater your chances are of recovering from this narcissistic abuse and the greater your chances are of loving yourself and attracting a healthy love in the future. So thank you for listening until next time. Bye for now.